made a chair. I made a chair and I'm so excited because I've wanted this chair for so long. Okay, so I initially saw this chair in Burlington, Burlington. <laughs> I initially saw this chair in Bloomingdale's furniture shop and I fell in love immediately and uh, once I looked at the price tag it was way above my tax bracket <laughs> it was way above what I would spend on a regular chair to sit by a computer it was over a thousand dollars I can't remember the exact price it might have been somewhere around fifteen hundred dollars or so and it was beautiful, it had this silver hardware, and I knew the chair that I wanted would have to have gold hardware to go with my silver and gold theme that I have going on in this room. I knew that I wasn't going to buy that, so I decided that one day I'm going to make this. I'm going to make this chair, and it's going to be so beautiful, but I want it to have gray faux fur instead of white faux fur as it does now. So I bought a computer chair, and it was black with silver hardware and I the arms are um, black plastic as well and as I was looking around for gray faux fur fabric I could not find it I could not find it I wanted one similar to my gray throw that I put on my bed that I'm absolutely in love with but I couldn't find one that's similar to that so I ended up going to Ikea one day and I saw that they have this cream. It's supposed to be like a little rug you throw on the floor. They had a sheepskin and they had the faux fur or the faux, the faux sheepskin. <laughs> so I bought the faux and they retail for $15. And they always have this at Ikea, by the way, because it's not my first time seeing it there. And I've looked everywhere and I did not even think of going to Ikea for this. So I'm so glad that I did. So I bought three of them just in case two wasn't enough to fit. So I'm so glad that... Because to me, I always like having extra so that I don't have to run to the store, get more to use. I'd rather have extra and then return what I didn't use at the end of the project. So I ended up using two. It, it was time consuming, I would say that. Because this is a brand new chair, what I did was I spray painted the metal and the armrest gold separately. And then I put the chair together. It was after I made sure the spray paint is completely dried up because the last thing you want is to get spray paint on your beautiful fabric that you like looked around the world so it feels like for. Be sure to list all the items down below in the description box. Okay, let's get into it. <laughs> Gloves on already by the way. You're going to need a fur throw or a, a little fur rug situation i was looking for a throw that's similar to the one that i put on my bed but i wasn't able to find that and as much as i kept going back and forth to stores to stores to stores still couldn't find it i became impatient so i went to ikea and found this lovely thing over here i guess it probably belongs on the floor instead of on a bed because i wanted like a plushness of a bed situation but um I think it should work fine because look at the back of it. Oh, I don't know if you can really see it, but look. Yeah, look. Here's the back of it. The back of it is the back of it is not hard like a rug. It's something you are able to DIY with. I'm going to use two of these little rugs, little tr throws, whatever it is. <laughs> I'm going to use two of them to get this done. I bought three, so I'm going to just return one because um only two is needed so that's awesome going to need a needle and thread why because um I'm not sure if I'm going to be sewing or just staple gun and just using the staple gun the whole time but you're going to need a staple gun of course you're going to need spray paint if you want to turn it gold like mine if you want to turn the legs gold like mine as you can see over here then you may need spray paint. You will need spray, spray paint unless you can find some computer chair that that has, I don't know, that already has gold legs. Say hey, if you can, more power to you. Never used a staple gun before. So, <laughs> but I bought this from Lowe's. I'm sure they have it in Home Depot as well. You know, I'm always talking about Home Depot because that's just easier access for me than Lowe's is. Hence why I go there rather than Lowe's. But, um, yeah. 
this staple gun is by Stanley Bostitch. So if you want to get the same one I have. So I'm going to start off by doing a rough measuring with the faux fur to, to see how much how much I need exactly mark my I may need, I may need a pen as well I'm not sure um, because I may have to mark a few spots just to make sure that I'm really getting it right and getting it proper so let's get into it let's go so I'm gonna drape these two faux fur pieces on it see how it fits over it and see exactly where I need to staple or take it <music> So I'm using um, these clips. I just grabbed this from my desk just now. I'm using these clips to um, just hold the faux fur in place just to really see if this is exactly where I want it to be. a little harder than I thought um I don't know if you can see how right over here there's a little space that's left over but there's excess um, fabric over here so maybe I can cut this part off and add it to the sides maybe I don't know I just thought it could all fit perfectly so that's like a little annoying but whatever let's get back into it I'm only I'm going to sew like right on the around the backrest I'm going to sew that but on the cushion part the seat part um, I'm going to staple gun it and I'm going to sew the excess fabric onto the sides of it and then staple gun right underneath it hope that makes sense <laughs> first I'm going to mark um, my placements on this so that, that I sew it properly so I don't have to do it over and do it over in trial and error I'm just hoping I get it one shot and done I'm gonna be marking it with this pen on the side that's not going to be seen <laughs> by the way I'm using a pen but I would suggest you use a marker because this feels harder with a pen <laughs> So use a marker. But I'm all marked up. I'm going to take the faux fur off without taking the clips off. I'm going to try really hard for the clips not to fall off. I'll turn it over and get to sewing. Okay, so now I've sewn both sides, this side, this side, and I also sewed right over here because that's where both of the fabrics connect. And then I'm going to turn it inside out and see what I'm working with. So this is what we're working with. This is gonna be the back. And this is going to be the front and this little flap right here is going to be the actual cushion of the seat. Okay, so after all that work, let's just hope it all fits. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm so happy that it fits. You don't even understand. 
I'm glad I don't have to go over it twice. I'm glad it fits on the first try. God is good. Amen. Okay, let's get back into it. Now it's down to checking out how much fabric I need um, from underneath here that I can use and slip right over here on the sides and on this side as well. So hopefully this works. So my only fear of cutting a piece underneath here to put it over here is that it, this may start shedding. You know how, you know how when you get a weave, ugh, I haven't worn a weave in years upon years, <laughs> but you know how when you get a weave, you want to flip, when you put your tracks in, you want to flip it over on every braid instead of cutting for every braid because then I can make the hair shed. That's how I feel about this. I feel like it would shed only because um, the ends of it, oh, I forgot what it's called, <laughs> but only because the ends literally are... Um, sewn in like it's it's taken in at the end make sure that nothing comes out so i have a slight fear of it shedding because that would suck if it sheds that would so suck that would like mess up everything so when i connected this part to this part i um there might be some excess there might be some excess fabric left over underneath all of this right in this area so maybe i can take that and put it here because if this ends up shedding underneath that wouldn't bother me as much as it shedding outwardly like right over here because that right over here would be crazy okay but right over here inside it's not gonna bother me like i'm gonna be fine with that so i'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna, this is so, this is all trial and error, guys. I've never, this is all trial and error. Like, I've never, like, I randomly make stuff all the time, but I've never, like, done something for a chair before, so, and I don't even know if there's a tutorial for this. I don't even know. I'm just winging it, pretty much. <laughs> I'm just winging it, and we're gonna hope it looks great at the end, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna take this off and see how much excess fabric is left over underneath and see if I can pull from that and put it over here. What I do is measure this to see how much um, fabric I'm actually going to need, right? Okay. <music> both of the fabrics right over here I turned it inside out by the way so I'm thinking maybe I can pull from this maybe I can cut this because this is not ever going to be seen and hopefully it'll be enough I'm gonna measure it first and see but hopefully it'll be enough to add on to the sides and we'll see if that works out <music> Okay, so now that I have these two pieces, um, I can proceed with placing this back on the chair and seeing exactly where I need to sew it on. Just to really make sure that I'm precise and not, um, not sewing it where it doesn't need to be. <laughs> and I experienced a lot of shedding, by the way, but that's perfectly fine because... I expected it so it's okay I just hope it does not continue shedding I, I, I threw away I took off all the excess faux fur and threw it out so I hope that I don't have to keep pulling at it and I, I hope nothing keeps coming out pretty much right so yeah <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is um let me turn the music off Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to staple the side that I don't need to add any fabric to. I'm going to staple gun that down just to make sure that it doesn't shift over. Just to really make sure everything is proper. 
Um, I'm going to put my gloves back on because I do not want to mess up my nails. I've never used a staple gun before. Um, so yeah, I'm going to staple that on and... Oh my gosh. It's not... Okay, my hands are slipping with the gloves on, so I'm going to take the gloves off because my hands are slipping. Oh my gosh. This is harder than I thought. <sighs> okay, so what I'm going to do is staple it right underneath. I'm going to um, staple gun it right underneath. This is harder than I thought. <laughs> little bit of stapling <sighs> that should hold it in place while I'm sewing so that nothing is shifting so that I can precisely sew the amount that needs to be sewn on or precisely sew it to the exact spot that needs to be sewn on to. My camera died while I was sewing and I just continued sewing and I finished up the sewing pretty much as you can see you can't tell as you can see there's no missing parts everything is intact everything is where it's supposed to be I'm so excited <laughs> because I wanted a chair like this for so long um, okay so I started stapling already I did some of some stapling over here all around over here I'm gonna continue stapling I'm going to do some I have to staple right over here and yeah I'm just gonna really make sure this thing is intact <laughs> I just can't but <laughs> God is so good God is really good cuz I really wanted this for like so long so I'm happy <laughs> Now that I am all stapled up underneath, I'm going to go ahead and put the arms on. As I mentioned before, this is a brand new computer chair that I purchased to do this to. While I was putting the computer chair together, the last piece to put on was um, the last piece to put on was the arms, and I decided to hold out on putting on the arms because I knew it would somehow get in the way a little bit. Of putting my faux fur on so now that I have the faux fur on now I can put the arms on now I can um, screw the arms in so I'm going to proceed to do that so I spray painted a clear coat over the um, over the armrest because I just really wanted to make sure that everything is intact and nothing comes off. I have spray painted a clear coat before I, I'm just a little paranoid and because I've spray painted things before and there are times when the spray paint started to come off this is a long time ago probably like a year ago when um the spray paint would start to come off because um it had no top coat on it so I would also advise you putting a top coat over your over whatever you spray paint this is what I use. This is my top coat pretty much over my spray paint. So the same way when you paint your nails, you put a top coat over a clear top coat over your nails. Same thing you would do with when you spray paint. You put a clear top coat over what you spray paint. I learned the hard way, so I would say this is needed. <laughs> now that my armrests are extra protected, I feel secure and comfortable with putting them on where they belong. I'm excited. Thank 
you so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching one of my dreams come true. I absolutely love this chair. It's amazing. It's beautiful. And it's something I've wanted for quite a while. I've wanted this for a very long time. I, if you create this, I want to see it. Comment below if you plan on creating this or if you just had an interest in DIY. If you're a DIY fanatic like me, that's cool too. And I really love this chair and I'm so excited to use it forever. <laughs> I'm so excited to use it. And yeah, thank you. Make sure you check out my previous videos right over here. Yeah, and enjoy yourself. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye.